We've had some other great questions come in on the channel recently about snare wire installation and specifically what the best way is to do it to make sure that you get enough play and throw off to get a lot of different tensions and to make sure that the wires are seated on the head in the best way possible. We're gonna to touch base today on two different things, wires that utilize a strap to get on the drum, and then a vintage drum where you use a string and actually tie it off with a knot on the snare mechanism side. Today we're gonna to be installing these Pure Sound Custom Pro wires on this Tama drum here. These wires aren't traditional strap wires, but they do utilize a strap, so it's gonna be essentially the same thing if you're buying Gibraltars or another brand that comes with a plastic or a cloth strap to attach it. So where do we begin? Well, first things first, we're gonna lay the wires on the drum without attaching anything, and just make sure that they're in the middle and not too far to one side or the other. Now we'll pull the straps through the gaps on either side of the hoop. I like to start with the butt plate side and make sure that I get the strap inside and tension down with the end of the wires, the end plate of the wires, just inside of the edge of the shell. And basically the end game that we want is for the wires to be centered between the two sides of the shell that they're stretching across to meet. I like these wires in particular because the strap that comes with them has measurement markings on it so you can make sure that you're not twisted going into this thing, which will result in uneven tension on the wires if you use a strap to put them on. You need to make sure that the actual mounting of the strap is level so that the wires can be level. Okay, we've got that side in now. We're gonna spin the drum around and pay attention to the mechanism side. Okay, here is where the tricky bit is. We have to make sure that once the snare wires are in the mechanism and cinched down, we have room in the screw of the mechanism to move the wires closer and further away from the head. If this snare mechanism is too loose, we will tighten it up all the way, bottom it out, and the wires will still be loose. If it's too far the other way, then we won't be able to actually shut this because the wires will be too tight when the mechanism is at its loosest setting. So the first thing we wanna do is loosen this as much as we can. Okay, I think that's about enough. We're gonna feed the strap through and we're gonna put tension on the strap sort of in the way that the mechanism would to make sure that these wires aren't too loose as we're tightening this down. Now, depending on the instrument, at this point, you may want to also disengage the snare mechanism, which moves it even further up this strap, resulting in even more tension when you shut it. For this mechanism, and for most, I'll leave it engaged, but at its loosest setting, and then pull this taut as I tighten these screws. Again, at this point, it's really important to make sure that your strap is coming straight into the mechanism and not at an angle because it will result in the wires being unevenly tensioned against the head. Okay, now it's time to flip the drum over and see what we have. I can tell immediately that the wires are not even in contact with the head right now. Even though the mechanism is engaged. But since we loosened this to its furthest degree before we put the wires on, and then pulled them tight when we install them onto this side of the mechanism, we have plenty of room to tighten this up.
This way, you can have loose wires, you can have tight wires, you can have everything in between, and you won't run into one end or the other of the knob on your snare mechanism, ending your ability to go tighter or looser. By the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and that you have notifications turned on so that you'll never miss a new episode. We're making new ones all the time. The first thing I noticed when I first bought a vintage snare drum is that the mechanisms from the 60s didn't always have a way to clamp something like a strap on the mechanism side. And more often than not, it was just a bunch of holes like on this one right here. Uh, this is a 60s Afrolite and it has an old P83 strainer mechanism on it. These are awesome, super functional. I replace the mechanisms on my modern Ludwigs with vintage ones of these because I prefer them. Um, they're smooth and quiet and just great and indestructible. But you can't use a strap with them at all because there's nowhere to put it. So we had a, a direct question about this also last week with just what to do, how to tie this thing on there in a way that's going to make it usable and functional and just get the sound you want. So I'm not going to bother fussing with the butt side because it's the same as with the strap. It's just putting them through the gap, making sure that they're centered and then cinching it down in a way where the wires are centered on the head. So with a string, we're going to feed these through. And then this is the tricky part. If the ends of your strings are frayed, these are nylon usually, and I recommend just gently burning the ends with a lighter. It will create a hard kind of, I don't know, almost like a little, like a little pokey end on them that makes it easier to get them through the gaps in these uh, types of mechanisms. Um, we've already done that. So now we're gonna do the same thing as before, loosen this thing as far as it'll go. And I'm actually going to disengage it, not for the sake of tensioning, but to get the little openings up by the opening in the hoop so that I can put these straight through and into these holes. I'm not terribly concerned with what holes I choose to put them through. I usually just put them through the outside ones on the bottom and that's worked so far. Now, we've got these here, this is loose, the mechanism is released down to the end of the bolt, and we're gonna tie one knot and cinch it down, and then we're gonna tie the same knot, but in reverse. So the first time, I went with the right hand over the top and under, and the second time, I'm going to do the left over and under. Now the tricky part about this is keeping tension on the first knot. So you kind of have to hold it in there with your fingertip as you do this and cinch it down. The reason that we released the mechanism and also loosened this bolt is because that way we don't have to get this super tight. We can have a little bit of relaxation in this knot at this point because this is the very loosest that this mechanism can possibly go. And the other thing is, this is just a little knot in a nylon string, so it is going to loosen and settle a little bit over time. So you don't want to do it with the mechanism in the middle or with this tightened up because it's just going to kind of pull out. Going now to engage the mechanism, I feel like maybe I've done the knot a little bit too tight. It feels like it's going to be very tight if I push this down. So I'll release it a little bit and just work the knot loose a little bit, but not all the way, and then close it again. This will tighten back up on itself. And now that this is down, we can tighten the mechanism up a little bit. Right now, it's all the way at the end of the bolt still, so you can kind of fuss on your own a little bit with your drum and see you know, what the easiest way is for you to do this. The main thing is to make sure that you're not doing all of this knot tying with the mechanism engaged and also with the bolt halfway down because immediately you're losing half of your play in this mechanism and you're also dealing with it tensioned 
when you're also trying to tension this with your fingers. And that's just too many things to keep track of at once. So basically loosening everything, getting a good knot on there, and then just kind of playing with the knot a little bit as you go so that ultimately you'll end up somewhere in the middle of this bolt and also have good tension on the wires. And please, if you like what you're seeing, comment, like, share, please subscribe. We're making new content all the time and we're really excited to answer any questions you might have. It obviously, as in this video, gives us new ideas about information that people would like to have, demonstrations they'd like to see, and keep it coming. Thank you.